Right, here we go. So last lesson, we looked at how we built analytics into our bubble app. We did that. Uh, so now we want to display that data and visualize that data. So we're going to create a new page um, called um, Analytics. We've got a blank page here. Um, and we're going to go grab some of that data from the database and display it here. So I'm going to create a repeating group. Drop that onto the thing. I'm going to make it one column depth. Uh, I'm going to make it a full list. Um, I'm going to select it actually as text there. And you'll see why in a minute. I'm going to go and do a search for analytics. Um, but I'm going to put on the end here, I'm going to do user ID. And I'm going to do unique elements because each row that was appearing in the, in the database had the user ID next to it. Um, so a way of separating different user IDs is to search for unique elements, and that will just look for um, unique lines uh, where the, the user ID changes a bit effectively. So that will do my outer box. Um, and let's drop in a text box at the top here. Great repeating groups where you can't see the top. You can't see the out borders of it. I don't know why a couple have done that, but anyway. Um, right, so here's our text box. Let's put in here the current sales text, which actually will be the user ID. So we'll have that up, that up there. Um, let's just make this bold group there. Uh, and then let's stick another repeating group inside that. There we go. Let's put it over here. Make it a bit longer. Fill the box. Um, let's also make it one and full list. There we go. Full length. Drop it down a bit. There we go. Right, so we're going to make this analytics. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a search for analytics. We're going to add a constraint. We want this to just show the user ID of the box above us. And because we're inside a repeating group, we can pull from the repeating group above us. So we're going to pull the current cells text, which will be the user UID. Uh, so that's being pulled from the outer box here. So that will mean just these entries are from that particular user ID. So let's put a box inside our new repeating group. You can see the edges. Uh, and here, let's put in the event. So we get what event it is. Put that there. Great. Let's put in another text box down the bottom here. Inside, yeah, it is. And let's make that full length because it's going to be the URL and that's long. Let's just make it left there. Uh, right. Current cell analytics, page URL. So let's have the URL in there. Um, let's put that on the left as well. And then lastly, let's just have the date and time in here. So let's go great analytics, find the creation date. Let's format it so sensible. There we go. We want the day, day, month, month, year, year, hour, hours, minute, minutes, second, seconds. So that will give us when the event occurred. Right. I think that should work. So let's go and go to that page. Let's change this to analytics and go to that page. So what we should see is we should see um, two entries, which we do. So we've got two unique user IDs here, we've got 700 and uh, 8270, two different things. We've got um, page load and CTA clicks, page load and CTA click, which is what we did in the last lesson. Let's just tidy that up a little bit. Let us um, remove, we've got no borders. Okay, let's just remove the line between them. Um, I think that'll work. And let's reverse the order. So when we're doing a search, let's do it by creation date and descending. Yes. Um, that way we should see them in the order that they happened. So we should get page load at the bottom. And then the last thing that happened is CTA click. So there we go. Page load at this time. And then seconds later we get the cta clicked and the same here so it's a great way of displaying um, your data if you just want to track things through you can do more elaborate things 
Um, but you can see the pa 